Hi, I'm Andrew Hayes, and I'll be delivering this online course on mediation, moderation, and conditional process analysis. I'm what is known by my peers in the business as a quantitative psychologist. I conduct research on statistical methods. I devise, evaluate, and write about methods for testing hypotheses of interest to behavioral scientists. And I teach methodology to students at my university and in workshops I conduct online and in person throughout the world. I've worked at a couple of different universities and several academic departments. So in this regression model, I'm estimating y from x. This is a simple linear regression equation. It has a constant and a weight for x. The weight for x is what an ordinary least squares regression analysis routine would generate when it attempts to find the best fitting model of this form. The model that minimizes the residual sum of squares meaning the discrepancy between the values of y and the data. Y, so yes, I'm yes. telling it that y is withdraw. That's the name of the um, entrepreneurial withdrawal intentions variable. Uh, my x is e stress. That's the entrepreneurial economic stress. And then my mediator is that measure of business for the depressed affect. So those things there, y, x, m, and the model number are all that I need to, to run this. Everything else that you see here uh, are options. They're not required. Eh? And I'm gonna... uh, the bootstrap confidence intervals for the indirect effect. Uh, we're just looking for the endpoints, so you got to know where to find those. Those are down here, right? So, so 0.034 to 0.0111. I, I saved the total effect for last uh, because uh, if you went hunting for that, you won't find it here. Uh, there's nothing on here that provides that, so you're going to have to calculate it yourself. You know the total effect is the sum of the direct and so the indirect So you'll still hear people talking about the criteria to establish mediation that Barrett and Kenny made popular, but the days of those criteria are, are over. Um, we don't use those criteria to establish mediation anymore. So I would recommend avoiding the use of that causal steps logic in your argument. Uh, you may still get away with it, but that's becoming harder and harder with each passing year. I say consider yourself lucky or I'd like unlucky. to represent this model in graphical form and introduce some notation that I will be using regularly throughout the next several modules and then even into the section on conditional process analysis later on. So here's where we are. We have a model that includes x, w, and the product of x and w. We know that model allows x's effect to be a linear function of w. It's not at all obvious in that form, is it? But if we do a little bit of algebra, reverse what we did earlier, uh, we can see more clearly how x's effect is a linear so function of w, because we can so notice our standard error of the conditional effect of x when w is 5.12. And you can see we have a t value and a p value for testing the null hypothesis that the conditional effect of x is 0 at that value of the moderator. In other words, no difference in how she's evaluated on average between those told she protested and those told she didn't among people relatively moderate in how pervasive they see sex discrimination as being. Now that's clearly much easier than hand effects of X. So the 5.087 that it finds, it also inserts into the table. And I want you to notice that at that value of the moderator, there's an estimated 0.456 unit difference in how positively she's evaluated when she protests compared to when she doesn't. And that is exactly, that is a p-value. Exactly Our interest is five. in the weight attached to the product. Uh, here it is, a 0 0.130. And we see that statistically significant. That's the same as the significance attached to the change in the squared multiple correlation when we add the product to the model. Those are identical tests. So it seems from this analysis that the effect of PTSD on depression does seem to vary as a function of loneliness. Right, here's our equation. But as you know, this is very, very abstract. In order to make any kind of sense of this mathematical equation, we're going to need to draw a picture of the model. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that with the aid of process. So down toward the bottom of the process output, you will find know when x is zero, the effect of w is 0.25. Right? If we change x by one unit, then that's a transition from this line to this line. So what's the effect of w there? Well, we just need to figure out what the slope of that line is. Here we can see we've run eight points. y is five here, and here it looks like one. That's a change of four. 
downward first stage, which is the effect of X on M, and then the second stage, which is the effect of M on Y. So when we're allowing the first stage to be moderated, we call it a first stage conditional process model. So here's an example of one of those. So here then would be a second stage conditional process model where the moderator is specified as moderating the effect of M on Y, that second stage of the indirect effect. You can have both stages moderated, and there are a couple of ways that that could happen. Uh, down here, we have an example of a first and second stage conditional process model. In this example, both stages are moderated by a common so, variable. So nothing's allowing that to be moderated, so it's just estimated as a constant. So I just took you through the translation of our conceptual model into a statistical model, a set of equations. Uh, and you should have felt when we went through that that it wasn't difficult. Uh, it was just all of the principles that we've gone over in this course so far, but tied together in the form of an integrated conditional process model containing the mediation part and the moderation part. So, so that process on these lines through. are indirect effects. They're conditional because they depend on the value of the moderator we plug in. One of the big conveniences of a tool like process is it knows this function and it will do these computations for us. So it's got programmed into it this function and it knows what A1, A3, and B are so we, uh, so we can do these computations. In the bottom of the output, toward the bottom of the output in the summary section, you'll see the section that says indirect effect. It's the indirect effect of X on Y. Analysis of a serial multiple mediator model using process. In this module, I also introduce you to an option in process that allows you to custom specify where to assign covariates in the equations defined in a mediation model. It will seem for the next 45 minutes or so that we have returned purely to mediation analysis. However, what I'm going to do now is just some uh, prerequisite material to the next example of conditional process analysis. Uh, what we're moving toward is another conditional process analysis with two mediators. We did an example last time with a, a parallel multiple mediator model with the moderation component. Uh, this time we're going to do a conditional process and analysis and assign covariates to be in some equations um, and not others. And here's how it works. So by default, we know that when you list covariates, in the process command, those covariates end up in all equations that, that are estimated. Now we can override this with a, a, something called this called a C matrix, a C matrix option. This is available as a version three of process, and it was a, something that many, many people who are using version two had asked me about and thought would be useful. Um, so here's how it works. The, the way that assignment covariates are, are represented the way the assignment of covariates to equations is represented in processes well, with the this data C file is available to you. It's called Lawyer 2. Now, depending on which class you're in right now, you might already have a Lawyer data. Uh, that's different. The, this we're talking here about the Lawyer 2 data file. And so here's the SPSS version, uh, the SAS program, which you can execute to create the data file. And then you've also got the data as a comma delimited file, which you could read in to R. And don't forget to change your uh, code so that you're reading it from wherever you've decided to store the lawyer to uh, data file on your condition a person is in. I plug those patterns into that model and notice that my model produces the group means. So for everybody in the no protest condition, the model estimates 5.310 for Y. And that's the group mean we saw from earlier. For everyone in the individual protest condition, the model estimates 5.826. That's the mean of the individual condition. And then likewise for the collective condition. So our model is smart enough to figure out the best guess for anyone's evaluation. That's Captain's my mean. continuous focal predictor. And of course, my three category variable holding which condition a person is assigned to is my moderator. This uh, will generate considerably less output than when we use the MCX option. Uh, and so let's go take a look at that output now. So not much new to see here. Um, we'll this is a moderation in the first stage by W. Uh, w will be a continuous moderator. And then we're also going to allow the direct effect of X in our conditional process model to be moderated by the same variable w. 
So here's our conceptual model. Here's what we're going to do, and we're going to use the same sex discrimination study that we've been using. Our interest is in how the attorney's behavior influenced how she's perceived. When we look at collectively protesting compared to not, we see that all of the bootstrap confidence intervals for these relative conditional indirect effects are above zero. So she's, so when she collectively protests relative to when she doesn't protest at all, she's liked more, she's, that is she's evaluated more positively as a result of collectively protesting being perceived as more appropriate and when she behaves more appropriately for the circumstance, she's liked more. This mechanism is at work regardless of perceived pervasiveness, sex discrimination, but it's at work more so, or more strongly, if you will, among people who see sex discrimination as highly pervasive in society. It's a moderation of X's effect by W. And where is there no moderation of X's effect by W? So what value or values of implicit math self-concept do we see evidence of moderation of the effect of stereotype threat on performance by explicit math self-concept? So here is our model of y. Uh, we can write that in this form as well, Which noticing that we have square. two of the t in this case. And then here is the results when we use a moderate and a low value of implicit math self-concept. Those values correspond to the slopes of these lines, and now we have inferential information as well. So these uh, conditional two-way interactions correspond to the slopes of the lines in these figures, we see no statistically significant moderation of the stereotype threat effect by explicit math self-concept among women moderate to high in implicit math self-concept. But among women relatively low in implicit math self-concept, the difference in performance... In this module, I talk about how you can avoid the use of pre-programmed models by creating your own model and process. Such a custom model can be constructed entirely from scratch or by changing an existing pre-programmed model. In this short module, I show how to do both using the B matrix, W matrix, Z matrix, and WZ matrix statements available in process. As you've become familiar with the use of process, no doubt come to appreciate how it makes some kind of complicated modeling procedures fairly simple relative to a procedure like a structural equation modeling in which you'd have to know all the mathematics and how to set up the model and, and, and how you define indirect effects or conditional effects or the model index of moderated make the Z matrix look like this to a specify moderation of the effect of M1 on Y by Z. So this is essentially an edited version of model seven that includes the second stage moderation by Z of this one mediator's effect on Y. Here's the second option. Let's edit model 21. Here's what model 21 would look like if I just used model 21 without changing it. But that's not what I want exactly. I don't want those paths to be moderated by Z. So model 21 in its pre-programmed form looks like this, the Z matrix in its pre-programmed form. The W matrix is fine. It's the Z matrix that's offending, uh, offending me. What I want to do is program this Z matrix where I only specify the effect of M1 on Y to be moderated by Z, not the effects of M2 on Y. M3 on Y is increasing as W increases by one unit. It increases from minus 0.5 to zero. Now let's see what happens when we fix Z at one. So now we're comparing the conditional effect of X on Y when W is zero, but Z is one relative to when W is one, but Z is one. Okay, so notice there, we have an increase from 0.5 to 1. That's also a change of 0.5. So when we fix z to 0, but change w by 1 unit, our conditional effect of x on y increased by 1 half. Same thing here when we fix sex as w and tenure as z, so that it will end up generating the indices of conditional moderated mediation by sex at values of job experience because it will think of W is sex as the primary moderator and tenure as the secondary moderator, the opposite of what it would do over here in the original programming of model 21. So what we're doing is setting up model 21 just as we did before, except now I'm flipping my labels. So I'm